this time, <coughs> excuse me, we would like to welcome the 2009 NCAA Division II national runner-up, West Texas A&M University. A few notes on the Lady Buffs. This was the Lady Buffs' 20th all-time appearance in the NCAA Division II tournament with an overall record of 37-17. and 17. They made their fourth championship match appearance, having won national championships in their previous three appearances in 1990, 1991, and in 1997. This was their 11th appearance at the NCAA championship tournament, more commonly known as the Elite Eight, during which they have compiled a 12-8 and eight record, reaching at least the semifinals in eight of those 11 appearances. They conclude their season 39-4 and four overall. They are the champions of the South region and represent the Lone Star Conference. Representing West Texas A&M University head coach Jason Scoach, along with student athletes Melissa Harper, a senior from Peoria, Arizona, and Katie Rickwards, a senior from Canyon, Texas. Coach Scoach, would you please begin with an opening mm -hmm. statement about tonight's match? Um, well, it's what I told the team is I, uh, you know, we're very honest with the team, and I just think that, uh, you know, the game was a lot closer uh, than the score appears in the sense of, you know, you take out uh, Concordia, this is probably one of the lowest hitting percentages they've had, and then take out Casey Haig, or Hag, I don't mean to mispronounce her name, but uh, she did great against us. But you take that out, and she, they probably hit as low as us. So defensively, we're pretty much even, and there's a lot of long rallies. You know, the difference is, and told the team why Concordia is good, is, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, they just make less errors. And so, you know, you take out a span of two minutes of real time in each game, and I mean, heck, it's, I mean, it's dead even. But we, we the, you know, we just made errors at the wrong time, and our errors are unforced. But um, the, the game was close. Very long rallies, defense on both sides. I mean, these these are not good hitting numbers for a championship match from either side. Um, but again, they made less errors, and uh, hence why they win. I mean, it's, this is a game of errors, and uh, they make they're more consistent. And saw it with San Bernardino last night, and same with us is we make our runs, and then we had a chance to tie it multiple times in game one and two. And uh, we would do something silly, and then we lay off, and just and then then they earn a point. And so, but. I don't know. They just uh, they deserve it, and uh, it's something to shoot for. Again, the consistency factor. I mean, they're not as powerful as you know some teams. Is I don't mean that bad. Is they're offensive, yes, but it's their their strength is consistency, not errors, and they're not a power team like some of the other teams we've played against or you know pure defense. They're just balanced and again make less errors. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. We'll now open it for questions for Coach Scoach and the student athletes. Again, please state your name and affiliation prior to your question, and please make sure that all cell phones in the room are off. Thank you. Coach Scoach from Craig Roberts and Concordia Sports, as mentioned. What was your game plan going into? Did you think did you think you needed to stop them in any, any one area, or do you think you, that it was more a matter of you taking care of what you had to do on your side? Well, uh, yeah, we, we had a, we had an idea, and um, I, I mean, I think it worked. I mean. Like I said, defensively, we were good. Um, you know, they uh, – we had an idea about their middles. I mean, you, you had to pick your poison. And so we took a chance on some stuff. And, um, you know, without saying much, it's just a pecking order about middle, outside, right side. And, again, it, it worked good. The issue was is when we got digs, we were not aggressive in transition. It's something that's – that's that's our bread and butter. That's how we got most of our points this year was getting our butts off the net and transitioning in. And so, you know, that's the one thing we could have worked on. But defensively, we worked. And offensively, when we did what we sort of talked about, it worked somewhat. But, again, they did their part. Uh, I just think the, issue, the difference was, is again, the errors. But I think if we could have just been a little bit more offensive, we could have pushed this to four or five. Being, yeah, I guess this is for both of you. You know, your senior year, uh, you know, even though it didn't end up the way you wanted, you still came a long way. You got to the finals for the first time since 1997. Um, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, if, if, if you can, reflecting on getting this far in the season. 
we went back to the locker room and, you know, coach said, you know, it stings right now, but once the sting wears off, you need to really appreciate what we had this season. We had, we had a great season, you know. The teams that we beat to get here, you know, honestly, they, they deserve to be here just as much as we did. You know, we, we beat some great teams to get here, and so the fact that we were able to get by them to get here, I think it just speaks volumes for our team and uh, the things we've been able to accomplish, you know. It's, it's what you become a collegiate athlete to do. You come to compete at the highest level, and we got a chance to do that, and I got to do it with a team that I truly respect, and I got to play against the best team in the nation. And, um, you know, it's, it's great. You know, it, it's hard to take a loss any time especially to end my career, but, you know, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it to the best of the best. And I believe Concordia truly was the better team that game. Anything to add, Mom? It's just one of those things, like we said, that we weren't ending our season until December 5th. And that was our goal the whole year. And we had a horrible region to get through. They were just horrible as in they were awesome. Like we had so many different teams to get through, and we made it through that. And we had to refocus after that to get here and just pushing through all these games and getting to do it with the team we had. Like, I've never been this close to a team before. And so we're in the locker room crying because, like, we're leaving each other. Like, they're starting all over again next year. And it's just amazing to have this somewhat fairy tale ending to um, the four years that we've been here. So it's been an amazing ride. And hopefully we'll get to watch them come back next year. We're going to change our goal to end on December 5th with a win. Yeah, next year. <laughs> new goal. Yeah. We're a little bit too big. <laughs> just our goal. Too big. Yeah. 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 Open-ended. Uh, Coach, you talked about the defense being really good. Um, what were some of the – who were some of the players that really were able to dig down deep against Concordia? Well, I mean, the person that sticks out to me was I – th I thought um, – I just thought Lauren Thedford did amazing. I just – I mean, she is – she rose to the occasion, and you know she's not a really good jumper. And I thought she did. I mean, I thought she did great offensively as well. And you know, normally we sub her out in the front row, but she was filling it. And um, not to say other people weren't. We, we had some good blocks again, and I mean, it only recorded four, but we had a really we had a good amount of soft blocks where they they're just good at recovering them. But uh, I just thought as, as as far as the the person that really stepped up was uh, Lauren Thedford, and then Kelsey Mangum again. You know. Freshman DS, uh, she really did good, and she's a, a flighty person in general. <laughs> and uh, for her to stay focused the whole match was pretty nice. And so, and and Bevel, our freshman libero, but I just thought Thedford did amazing tonight. I I just, she, you know, she created digs, and we had talked about that creating digs, and she moved. I mean, a lot of players just take a ball that's within a step of them, and she was taking two or three steps to dig a ball. And so, I mean, that means you're in the game and you're reading it, and. Uh, you know, that's a that's a special player. So I thought she did great. Melissa, talk a little bit about uh, what you saw up front. What did you what did you see in their block? They seem to be able to, to, to get their middle over quite a bit and, and make a lot of little soft blocks and not give you a lot of lanes to, to hit. Um, they were definitely one of the better blocking teams that I've went against in the middle um, all year. They're amazing, and when they didn't have the block, the defense was right behind them. It was extremely frustrating for me. But um, I can respect that because it was just hustle all around. Like, they worked to close the blocks, and they were just good middle blockers and good help from their um, other their left side blockers. And they just did really well, and they knew what to key on and kind of, I don't really know. I don't really know. Like, they just, they knew what to go for, and they were just doing the mechanics and pressing over and just kind of taken away what I wanted to hit, and so it was a little frustrating. Uh, 